Okay. Um, so anyway, so we've, we've got everybody else here. Um, and if we get moving, then then everybody can go finish making their dinner. So I probably everyone's going to have eggs. It looks like at this point, but oh yeah. Um, so the, the first thing, did everyone get a copy of the minutes that I sent out? Yeah. So the draft, uh, yes. draft minutes. So um, any questions? Any any concerns with those minutes? Nope. I make a motion to approve the minutes from last month. I second it. Okay, so th those are approved. Um, Sarah, if, if you don't mind, I'd like to just first go through, I spent some time on the phone with, with Doug, and then kind of you can hear all the, th the updates that he gave, and then if you've got anything else from your end that, that's come up at Town Hall, then you could kind of share those at the end, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. So, <clears throat> again, I did, like I said, I, I spent a lot of time talking to, to Doug, really to get some updates. And it seems like every time the, the last few meetings, everything we've always said is things keep moving forward. So um, I sent out the, the things about the playground, the, the proposals. So Troy's dealing with those companies, talking to the companies, making sure the quotes are good and everything matches up. Um, and hopefully he can finalize that. And, and one of the big things on, on his plan is gonna be to try to get those, uh, the, the new play feature installed at Outhouse Park. So. Uh, as Doug mentioned in our last meeting, there's some things insurance wise that we have to change there anyway. So, um, you know, build, there, there's some there's some room to get that feature in there. So if if everything works out from the town board and everything else, Troy's going to move ahead with that uh, play feature. Um, there was there was no explanation for the huge price variance, huh? That just was what they had came was, up with. That's, that's why you get four quotes. So, yeah, that's yeah. crazy. So, um, I do have a note about that. I was talking with Troy earlier this week. Um, we may have to do an RFP for that because of the cost, um, because it's quite high and it wasn't on state bid. So he thought they were gonna come in a little lower. So that could delay it just a little bit. Um, it's just our procu procurement policy. If it hits a certain level, we have to do an RFP, but we're gonna let all the people know that sent quotes in um, so that they can respond to the RFP. I don't. I, I wouldn't expect it to really change the price too much, but we might get a few more people interested in submitting. So it, that won't change the timeline, will it? I mean, it would still be all go for the spring. Um, yeah, because I mean, we're working on the draft for the RFP already. So we, I, uh, I mean, I don't always have all the information, but I'm the one who writes it. So um, as far as I know, we'd be releasing it within a week or two, and we usually need to keep that out for at least 30 days. Um, but yeah, I mean, we'd have all the answers in time to do it by spring. So next thing that inclusive playground still on track. Um, and, and again, it, it's finalizing the details with, um, you know, beginning the site work. Uh, the, the town's going to be in there to do all the drainage and, and everything else as time and weather permits when they're not plowing snow or spreading salt or whatever they're gonna you know try to get somebody over there and you know a lot of the other things were when they found fill from another job they were able to dump it in and so all that thing that that'll kind of stay through the into the spring and and hopefully um financially and everything else the the inclusive playground people keep making strides on their end so um you know really nothing new to report other than still moving forward so any questions on inclusive playground? Uh, the trail work, uh, right now I think Doug's waiting on maybe a, a, an update from Fisher Associates. They're working on one section over there along uh, Brickyard Road. Uh, but it, another case of little by little, it's it's coming forward. Uh, you can see the, the big excavators parked there now behind the Civic Center. There was a roller there the other day and, and um, Right now, they've done a pretty good job connecting from the backside of Outhouse Park around those drainage ponds over almost all the way, well, they've got a little bit done all the way to, to County Road 30. So Doug's still working, you know, on taking kind of a right-hand turn there to get across County Road 30. Remember, he said we couldn't cross on the county road. We had to actually go into the city line um, to be able to cross. And he said he's working with uh, the owners of the property 
uh, German brothers owned that land. So just getting a right of way along the kind of the edge of the road to take another left-hand turn and then get back up to the berms. So, and then the trail will pick up on top of those berms over across behind the airport. So little by little, um, you know, square foot footage is getting added to the trail and, and you know, we're moving towards Farmington. So, um, yay. Getting close I can give you, I can give you a little update on the Fisher portion of the trail. Awesome. Uh, yeah. So as you guys probably know, MRB has been working with us to design the Southern portion of the trail up to Thomas. And then Fisher has been working to design from Thomas up to Purdy. Um, and the Fisher section, um, they're about to mail out a flyer to all the residents who live along that section to try and get some feedback from them. Um, and so I think they're going to be mailing a flyer within the week and it should go out to everybody. And there's a website for it where they can provide feedback. And I don't know if you guys have seen that, but I can share that with you. They just finalized that um, right before Christmas. Um, so if you want, I can forward that to you, Mark, or I can just respond to the note that went to everybody with the link for tonight's meeting. Sure, that'd be great. Um, so you guys can take a look and you can feel free to provide feedback too. Um, they just, it's a flyer that shows like the design and the ideas of how the trail's gonna go along the side of the road on a couple different sections of it. Um, Cause it's gonna look a little different. It's not gonna be the same um, all the way up, but, um, and eventually once that we get feedback from residents and the design, design portions wrapped up, we hope to work with Fisher again um, or at least that's the idea to have them help us apply for a grant to get money for the construction. So awesome. for that portion, that because that portion is going to be more expensive. With, with the, the wetlands and everything else down through the dip and yeah. Yeah. Doug had mentioned something about some possible federal funding or there was something there that so. Yeah, there's a, there's a couple of different programs we can try and um, apply for and one of them is federal money and it's a similar I can't remember if it's the same program or the counterpart to the program that Farmington got to build their section um, but 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 with the federal money we have to design it um, with their guidelines with the width of the trail and how it's built otherwise they aren't likely to give us the funding so that's why Fisher got involved but anyway it's moving along too so it's it's good stuff Awesome. Um, Doug too had mentioned that, that really 2021 is going to be, um, as far as park maintenance and, and um, one of the big things there is going to be to go back to Blue Heron Park. Before COVID there, the, the summer before COVID, Troy put a lot of time in down at, at Onanda Park and they, they felt really that a bigger bang for the buck was to really put a lot of effort and time into one park at a time instead of you know, running from park to park to park and trying to do a lot of little jobs. It just didn't seem very effective. So again, that was the plan for last summer and then kind of COVID uh, took over. So um, those plans and, and some funding and some ideas are just gonna be rolled over to Blue Heron. So that'll be the, the main focus, regular maintenance, um, you know, and then the planned improvements as outlined in the, in the master plan are still gonna continue for the other parks as time permits and as, you know, Troy can get from, from area to area. So that's really the, will be Troy's big focus this year is, is Blue Heron and then kind of the other um, things that everybody calls him about and takes up his time, no matter what he's got planned, all the emergencies and fires he's got to put out. So, um, and again, he'll be basing a lot of the other little jobs on, on the master plan. Um, Doug mentioned the new reservation system. I don't know, Sarah, if that's ready to go yet. The, um, it was either going to go online soon or it's, it's, it's now online. A new Last week it wasn't, I know, because I, I reserved a cabin last week. So okay. I think they're still transitioning. I don't know, Sarah, if you know more than I do. But. I actually don't. That's one of the things I haven't really been following. The town clerk's office has been doing a lot of that. Um, I can find out, though, if you guys want to know. Yeah, she, she gave the impression that it was something they were going to be working on in the next, you know, month here, basically trying to There could be some transition too as they get started with getting it up and running and working out some kinks. Hopefully this program will work better than the other one. Yeah, they had a lot of problems with that other program. It, it took three days for us to figure out when I was trying to register for this, you know, for the room, if it was available, 
what days it was available and to be able to get the system to book it. I mean, it literally took three days. So I was, I was really asking her a lot of questions as a park committee member, you know, why is this happening? So yeah. And it was just as bad on their end. Um, I yeah. mean, it was causing way more work and it was supposed mm -hmm. to be easier. So yeah, mm -hmm. we, we get, we sent the program back. <laughs> mm -hmm. We said, no, yeah. give us our money back. It's not working. And it yeah. sounds like a lot of good features on the new one, as far as being able to, to, to log on and do things online and even possibly people could log on and, and right from Onanda Park, maybe a little computer and the, and the staff down there could. Yeah, I think it's going to expand what they can do on site too. Yeah. I think there's going to be something, yeah, something down at the gatehouse. So um, and, I have and, a note to let you guys know what I find out. And, and Doug, Doug had also mentioned that it ties in maybe somehow to, it, it, it sends out notifications or ads to Airbnb and some of those things that there are um, there's the possibility of an open rental and things like that. So um, it seems like it just gets the word out better for us that there are available cabins and maybe we can increase our usage just by being linked into this program. So, but, so that's, that's again, that's in the works and, and, you know, it coming pretty quick to, to get rolling. So, um, the other thing that, that Doug said was that Sarah was just going to pick up all the work that Sam's been doing. So that's kind of going to be the plan for replacing Sam is, is Sarah's going to take over. So um, that, that was one of my big questions. To Doug is, is that why you're still working tonight at 630? It's <laughs> so, but um, right now, Doug said they're working through civil service and, and, trying to define really what the role is going to be because same as, as with Sarah, Sam had so many hats and it really didn't fit well with, with anything that the, that the county had a, had a job description for. So they're trying to flesh everything out. And as Sarah said at the beginning, everybody at, at town hall right now is maybe picking up a few extra pieces to, to get everybody through. So, um, and even Doug said they're, they're in discussions with the city rec program you know, to maybe have more joint effort on some of the rec programming and, and signing up and keeping track of the rec programs into the summer. So, but it sounded like Doug had a, a handle on, you know, making sure that the rec programs were, were getting, you know, set up in the brochure and, and all those things that Sam did, it sounds like we'll still be on track. So um, everybody's picking up their pieces there and, and we'll see what the next month or month and a half brings. So but um, the other, the other kind of a, a, the big item that I know many of us were on the call for the, the, the um, public forum for the possible park purchases. So really from the park end, there's no action, you know, Doug said, other than, you know, be, if you'd like to attend the, the next public hearings, um, the town board meets at 8 a.m. on Friday, this Friday. So there will be another public hearing on those possible park purchases. So really everything's kind of in a wait and see mode, how, how those public hearings go. And then if, you know, if, and when, you know, there's a decision made by the town board to move forward, then, then we'd be, you know, leaned on more to start coming up with some suggestions and ideas and, and things like that. But um, are we as a committee doing, helping with any of the research or, uh, you know, I, there were a lot of questions that came up from that meeting. I was just wondering if we were helping to do any of the research. Dave, Dave and I actually helped Greg Westbrook answer a group of questions. You did, Dave, right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, and I did also. And Greg Westbrook took all of the uh, RSM questions that he had put together. So we answered those and send them back to Greg, what, a week ago, I think it is. But I would recommend that we all, that everyone here read the agenda for the town board meeting on Friday, because in there are all the communications that have been received. And there's a great many, uh, yeah, there's a, a big number of communications regarding the, um, the two purchases, potential purchases. And there's also some comments in there about Onanda Park needing, uh, the current parks need uh, upgrades and maintenance and um, nothing specific that I saw, but uh, I skimmed over them. It 
the it's what it's it's really not a lot of pages. It's all all, to, all together that agenda is only 155 pages this month. <sighs> Usually it's about 280. <laughs> um, so it actually it was it was a, a relatively short reading period, maybe only an hour. But I recommend you at least read those comments because it uh, it it actually it highlights what the what Parks and Rec can do, and it it also lets you know that there some of the some of the issues and the, some of the issues i can see um are if especially the the tishner point if um if it does become a park um how do we open and close it uh at, at the beginning and end of a day and so it see it seems to me that we might need a dedicated person to go to this park and physically close the gate on a daily basis um just food for thought you'll come up with you'll come up with uh, ideas and and thoughts of of the impact it'll have on the um, parks maintenance and the the uh, personnel associated with the park. You know, I mean, a lot of water going to have to go into the bridge before you know we we need to really worry about a lot of the operational type things. So yeah, yeah. But, Can I ask yeah. why we we were answering specific questions to a candidate for the supervisor position? I didn't. I didn't understand what you said. What we we weren't. It wasn't a. That was not a a, a parks. And it wasn't a, a parks committee deal. Um, no. I think from a parks committee standpoint, everyone that can get on. I know everyone's busy, but the, you know there there's a lot of misinformation about what's going on down there. So mm -hmm. I think you really have to weigh in and and you have to speak out because I, there is a whole group that's not in my backyard. And, and and I get it, I understand mm -hmm. it, but yeah. but you know every survey that's ever been done says we want to add parkland and yeah. and these property prop these properties are not coming up like the Kellogg property they're just not so right. if we if we can make it happen and we can throw our support on the positive side it would be a good thing. Yeah, when is what time is it at eight? Did you say Friday? Eight eight a.m. Yeah. Friday morning. One of the things that's mentioned a couple of times, and Dave would know this, is a, a feasibility study. And while I think having these public meetings is actually part of a feasibility study, uh, there are other issues that would be taken into account if we actually did one. And it might not be a bad idea to do that, um, in my opinion. And that's in particular for the Tishner point. And, and again, I'd just like to see stuff coming from the Parks Committee that the Parks Committee reviews together rather than sort of ad hoc, you know, going to random citizens that are asking for information from Parks Committee members. So I just want to make sure if it's coming from the Parks Committee that information is coming from the Parks Committee. Yeah, and, 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 and just to be perfectly clear, it's it, there's no, I, I don't think Karen was representing the Parks Committee. I know no. I was not. I was yeah. representing. I was representing myself as a as a citizen who's concerned with whatever, um, because I, I think if we're not vocal, we're, we're going to be stuck Agreed. with the people who are not in my backyard. You know, right. so so Agreed. we we all have to. If we have an hour, you know, I, I don't know, Mark. Can you send that link out to um, to make sure, or, or you know, can somebody send it out that 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 we so we all have that link for eight o'clock and. You know, it's it's a painful thing unless the parks thing is first up, but you, you'll be on it a while. But it, it's definitely it's definitely worth our time. Well, I think it's important that we educate our friends and neighbors about, you know, the trails master plan and the parks master plan. There's a lot of people that aren't aware of the work that have gone into these things. And, you know, this is, you know, as my former trails committee members know, this is this could be certainly the RSM park is sort of a culmination of one of the trails master plan goals that has been on the tables for 12 years now. So, so it, um, I think we need to be able to, to let people know that, you know, for years we've been talking about doing things like this and it's not just, you know, the people sitting on this meeting right here that have been interested in this, this is something where we've surveyed the, the community where we've talked in front of the town board for a decade on it. And I think it's important to let people know that in these meetings um, so that they know that there is support out there for public park land as well. The, the problem, Adeline, is that people 
people um, hear what they want to hear. Mm -hmm. And Agreed. what they don't want to hear doesn't register. And mm -hmm. that's, that's a, a, these public hearings are a good example because Doug gave a really in-depth presentation, yeah. <laughs> a half hour presentation mm -hmm. on it. And, you know, they, they ignored like, it. <laughs> yeah. Ignored it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it, so it, they knew what they wanted to say when they walked in the room and yeah. that's what they said. Yeah. So, yeah. But, but honestly on that, I was on that. I think Doug did a great job, but the one overwhelming thing I would come away with, there was too much information. Yes. So should have, yes. should have broken that up into two pieces and then it's just easier to digest from that standpoint. Mm -hmm. But um, as, as, as far as the parks go, the RSM deal, it looks like the city's throwing money in. So I, I really look at that as a foregone conclusion. We've got to make that happen. That's, that's no, there's no tax increase on that. I mean, we're obviously eroding some of that, the money that we have set aside, but that's what it's set aside for. <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I, I think we really need to go hard at that. Mm -hmm. I know there was a meeting this morning that Doug had with um, the Lakewood Meadows and Acorn Hill residents. It was very informative and he did a great job. He and Kathy Menicott did a nice job of keeping it contained to just that one particular project and talking more clearly. And I think a lot of the residents were very concerned and then slowly learned some things. And, you know, things that were important to them are understanding that, you know, that, for example, that easement right now, it's 60 feet wide. They weren't really aware of that. Um, and that it's currently owned by RSM, who, if, you know, if I'm on the Lakewood Meadows side or the Riley's Run side of that easement, I would much rather have the town owning that 60 feet of land than the, you know, a neighboring development, because obviously the neighboring development is going to do whatever they can to get that trail closer to our development. And, oh, you know, more advantageous for their residents, whereas a town will do a nice job of, I think, creating something that is appropriate for both sides of it as well. So I think that really um, assuaged some people's concerns and was really a, a very helpful and well done meeting this morning. So. And another way to support the RSM piece is just the need, that's a source water protection point. That's why exactly. the city can get involved. Mm -hmm. And even if people are, well, that's a lot of money to spend for that narrow strip and that parkland and what's the access and anything else, just protecting the source water for our drinking water is huge. And I think if we, that's another way to take it. The parks is an extra benefit, but mm -hmm. that's another way to take it. Yeah, um, I didn't know until this morning that the intake is right there for, <clears throat> for, the, for the water system. So. Yeah, so that's, I mean, that's a major and my, you know, that's what makes it like Dave was saying, even more of a no brainer that one because, hey, we've got, we have to protect it. A lot of people that have reached out to me about the other, the concern is cost about the Titchener. And, um, you know, I really see it going to some, I see it going to, you know, to a referendum for people to have a say. I don't know what that means for time frame or anything else, but um, that's, the big, that's the biggest, con yeah, that's the biggest concern that I have heard about that parcel. And, and I think from our point of view, again, to, I mean, we could talk about this park, you know, all night, but I stay on top of it. There are opportunities, you know, for to go to the town board meetings and, and you know, be an active part and make sure that we're, we're listening and hearing. And I mean, anything that we do as a committee is subject to any sort of open meeting laws. And, and so we've got to make sure that, you know, as, when, when there's nine of us talking about this, it's, it's, you know, from an official point of view. So, but. Um. Just a couple quick points. Um, you know, what Karen was saying about all the comments that are available on the agenda. It's not just for this one. For any of you who didn't see the agenda for the last meeting on January 11th, there were just as many comments, um, not comments, I should say communications, whether it's an email or a letter that comes from a resident um, um, pertaining to these parks. So the January 11th town board agenda has a lot to as will the February 8th, because as of now, just today, I got probably five more communications that Doug received that went into the folder for next month's agenda. So there's a lot should of information. We be, should we be doing a committee communication about it at all? That's up to you guys if you want to. Um, and as far as Friday's meeting um, on the town's website, you can click, um, if you just go to 
townofcanandaigua.org, down at the right hand corner on the bottom, there's a link that says, I think it just says agendas. Um, you click on that and it'll take you to a page for the different agendas we have. If you click on town board, it'll show you all the agendas we have up to and including Friday. So you can take a look at them. Um, and the link to join the meeting is also there. And the communications so, are Sarah, all at the, begin the beginning of the agenda. So you don't have to dig yeah. through 260 pages to find them. They're right at the beginning. Yeah, right after the list of resolutions. So so Sarah, it sounds like they're counting the emails that come in, right? Um, yeah, I mean, yes, any, re any, either a letter or an email that we receive um, goes directly into a folder that we keep and then it's added to the agenda as a PDF attachment. So as, as committee members, as a committee, we can send something out, but as individuals, we should send something out because they're, I mean, it's, it's going to be a, a, a balance beam at some time. You know what right. I mean? We so got as a committee, you guys pro. could send um, a report to be included with this month's agenda. Um, that's always an option. Um, you can email it to me or to Doug or to Jean. Um, you can write up a statement from the committee and that can be included um, in the report section. Now, Friday's meeting was originally meant for paying bills but um, so it doesn't have a report section, but the February meeting will. But yes, as individuals, you can you can email Doug. You can you can email um, our info at townofcanandaigua.org email address with just hey, I want to make a comment about you know the lakefront purchases. Um, but yeah, all of that's welcomed. Everybody good with that? We'll get through Friday and see what, what that public hearing comes out to also. Dave, good? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I think still send some emails out, you know what I mean? Because I think that's, that's, that will make a difference. I, no, I agree. I agree also. So, and, and I, I think that through our minutes and through everything else, we could draft a, a support, you know, that, that says the Parks Committee supports. And I know that that I'm sure that we've all also too expressed our views to, um, you know, the town board members and, and everybody else as well too, so. And I should note that um, the continued public hearings from last month, there's already a note on the agenda um, that they're gonna be continued to the February right. 8th meeting. So there's no plans, there's no resolutions on Friday's agenda for the parks purchases. They're, they're <clears throat> planning on continuing the public hearings to at least the February 8th meeting. So you have time to write to write more or to look into it or to send in a, you know, a, an official statement from the Parks Committee. So Sarah, is somebody taking all of the comments from the public hearings and all of the comments in the communications folder and keeping track of how many are in favor, how many are against of uh, both the RSM property and the uh, Tishner Point property so that we can see, I mean, then, then there's some people, pretty much everybody was either for or against. I don't think there were middle of, many middle of the roaders, but um, is somebody keeping track? You know, you have a board. I started to with the communications folder, but I got confused and stopped. <laughs> uh, I can only tell you that I'm not tracking it. Um, I don't know that we're gonna be doing any statistical analysis on right. who said they liked it and who said they didn't, but we do keep all the communications. And I was at the town board meeting on the 11th and mm -hmm. yeah, myself and Jean Chrisman um, mm -hmm. kept all the questions that came in. Cause you know, we mm -hmm. could, they couldn't answer the questions. It was just a comment period, but we collected all the questions. And um, I, I think Doug ended up with those. So they are keeping track of the people who were asking for information. Yeah, yeah Doug ended up with them, but he shared them with Greg Westbrook. Okay. And uh, we we had a, I think there were like 25 that he shared with Greg and uh, yeah, there were a lot Dave, of Dave and Greg and I took those. Uh, but if it go, if there is a feasibility study of some sort that is done, it would seem to me it would be important to have that information of how, in the communication folder and also on the um, public hearings on how many were uh, supportive of it and how many were not supportive of it because that's part of measuring, you know, what it is that the residents want. 
And we'll definitely have it. I mean, we keep all okay. that so we can easily go back and get it. Okay. It'd be good for an intern to do. <laughs> so any, anything else? And, and again, it's going to be back up uh, Friday and then again in February. So this isn't going to jump away anytime soon. So uh, the, the other thing that, that um, Doug had shared was there is a plan. We had talked back in the fall about the gypsy moth. And Sarah, I know you're you're pretty active with this with the the, the tree team, but they're actually on the, the town board resolution for Friday morning. There's a plan um, for having an aerial treatment of Onanda Park. So um, you know, Doug shared that that's that's kind of coming. There there's there's some pretty good action taking place to to address that concern, not only at Onanda, but I, I think a lot of the local people. Sarah also jumped on board and, and um, might have an opportunity to take advantage of some of that. Yeah, so um, there was a lot of back and forth last summer when you know we were in the heat of it. Um, and we were working with the watershed and we were reaching out to DEC and we were, we were talking to Cooperative Extension and trying to figure out what to do. And in the end, um, DEC decided that they would help coordinate and so our, one of our regional foresters was collecting names um, of people who were interested in having treatment. And so the town, along with lots of other private land, landowners said, yeah, we'd like to know more, you know, what can you do? So I think the price has gotten to be about $60 an acre. It's just an estimate right now, but um, that's what we're, the information we're getting from the company that DEC is working with. Um, and I, don't know for sure if the abutting landowners with Onanda are doing it, but I think, I think they're talking about it. But I do know that there's a lot of other private landowners in the in that part of town and over towards out here towards Bristol that are going to jump on it. Um, so that that resolution on Friday's agenda will allow Doug to work with that company that does the spraying um, and potentially get in there with a contract to do it, but. We are also working with Finger Lakes, uh, no, sorry, FLCC. Um, there might be some students interested in going out to Onanda to do an egg mass survey, which is what DEC recommends that you do if you want to consider spraying, because it's a way to kind of judge how bad it's going to be. I mean, obviously, we know that it's probably going to be bad because of how terrible it was this year, but um, they may come out there and do that and get a sense of, you know, are we at that threshold? The answer is probably, but <clears throat> there's a survey method that you can do that kind of says, well, if, you, if you're above this threshold, you really should consider treatment because you're gonna suffer more tree mortality or likely to anyway. And if you're below it, you probably don't need to. Um, well, there's I feel also, bad now. I just scraped a ton of eggs off of trees over there when I was hiking. <laughs> well, they're also going to um, the watershed um, association is also organizing a group of volunteers to go and do just that but they're going to try and time it so that they do the egg mass survey first and then the volunteers are going to go scrape later and they might focus the scraping down on the lakeside because we're not going to have that portion sprayed um, for obvious reasons because it's right by the lake um, but there may also be some conversations to with someone to come out and treat some of the individual specimen trees on the lakeside portion of Onanda with injections um, to save some individual trees that were hit pretty hard since we can't. So Sarah, are they gonna, are, is it aerial spray? Is it aerial spraying and is it BTI? A BTK, I, I can't remember what it's actually called. It's some sort of a fungus they've turned into a spray that will kill the caterpillars, but they have to eat it. So they spray it on the trees and they have to do it within like a couple weeks window. So it's really specific and there's big risk for it not working if they do it at the wrong time. Um, so is it aerial or are yeah. they gonna spray yeah. it from the ground? It's from an airplane, yeah. yep. They'll fly over, they have right. a grid, they have a computer system in the right. airplane and they can right. map it based on our on the property on Onanda um, and they can exclude certain parts that don't need it, you know, like they don't need to spray over the field. But um, should we not be scraping if we're over there then now? Because that we, I mean, what you side. might do along the trail isn't going to make it isn't going to make a difference in the surveying 
okay. like if they go and see how bad it is because they can just look at the other parts and when they do uh, the egg mass survey it's not the whole area it's like ahead of time for whoever's going to do it they would kind of look at a map of the area and they like kind of pick these um just like plots and it's done with like a circle like you stand in the middle you mark the circle with flags and you look and kind of do a uh like a guess how many can i see in this direction in this flagged area and then you know you move on to a next predetermined location and it's just field sampling you know um and then it, it's they use that to estimate to estimate what the um what the total ag mass is for the entire acreage based on those individual um plots and I can't remember how many per acre you do maybe it's like one plot per acre or I don't know I looked into it to think about doing it at my house but it was seemed like such an overwhelming thing I, I didn't do it but Adeline when you scrape and when you talk about that you just knock them off the tree I mean what do you how do you do uh, I walk with poles and I yeah. I actually have like a round thing on the end of my poles so they were really yeah. I was angry about them so my husband and I spent like a good hour on the Barnes Road trails just scraping just them all scraping off. Them off and leave them on the ground right well in the summer I was scraping them off of my trees and throwing them in bleach but um yeah. you know so you know, we're just doing it that. depends on who you who you ask the recommended way to do it some of the experts will tell you just scrape it off others will say well you have to scrape it off into a can you know a bucket of water and leave it for three days to kill the eggs um so but my take on it is scraping it off is better than not scraping it off even if you don't have a bucket you know so like at my house we just we scrape it we did the bucket one day but we've got 14 acres and there's just two of us so we just said just scrape it <laughs> But anyway, not to get too off topic, but yeah, so that resolution will give Doug, um, if they pass it, will give Doug a chance to talk to the um, the, peop the the pilots, I guess, the company that does the aerial spraying and see, you know, what kind of a contract we could get with them. Um, and then also potentially talk to someone to, to look into taking care of some of the trees down by the lake. So lots going on there. Sarah, any other things, any other hot issues that we need before we talk about the comp plan or um no i think you covered it with a lot of stuff <laughs> i just took but, up no i mean of... i think you pretty much covered everything yeah. i would have mentioned okay i just took up a lot of doug's time so i feel bad <laughs> doing that these days but um so that so that brings us on to the comp plan i know that you wanted to um kind of our our feedback on on what we saw how do you want to go about um, you want to know, do you want to give an overview? What's, what's the best way? Um, yeah. And then I, you know, I got your email that you sent the other day and I actually have it pulled up. And if you don't mind, that might be worth sharing too, because sure. um, the things you mentioned are probably what everybody else would notice too. And some stuff that we've already talked about in a couple other committees. Um, but before we do that, yeah, I have the, that section pulled up um, with your section pertaining to parks and rec. So Bear with me a second. I'll go ahead and share the screen. So can you guys see the plan? Yep. Yep. Okay. We see the goal. Yep. Yeah. So for those of you who aren't familiar with what we've been doing, um, Comp plan's really large document. I encourage you all to read it if you have a chance, because um, the more eyes that see it, the better the document will be in the end. Um, it's our comprehensive plan. It's got 10 goals covering what we hope is pretty much everything that the town does. Um, Parks and Recreation is just one of those 10 goals. Um, there's a whole section in the beginning of the comp plan that goes over existing conditions, which is basically a big, here's the town of Canandaigua, here's what we have. We have, you know, covering everything, you know, the natural resources, culture, our economy, everything. Um, and then it goes into um, talking about recommendations for, you know, where the town wants to be. This comprehensive plan is intended to kind of work as like our strategic plan or our you know guide for the next five to ten years so mm -hmm. the individual goals 
have, they all look like this. They've got um, this little paragraph that kind of covers, you know, where do we want to go with this topic? And then the measurables for, you know, how are we going to tell if we're doing a good job? And then um, the next, for this goal, there's a couple pages, um, recommended action steps for how, how we might achieve that. Now, all of these action steps came out of community meetings that Eric held um, like last, not, la not 2020, but 19, 2019 in different parts of the town, different geographic parts of the town. And um, they, the people who came to the meeting were some of the people who were on the comp plan project team, but also just members of the community. Um, and so, you know, he would talk to them about, well, we're talking about parks and recreation, you know, what do you want? What do you want to see? And then the next part of the meeting would talk about, well, how are we going to get there? So all the stuff that's in this recommended action steps list came from those meetings. So Mark, you sent an email the other day talking about how some of them might seem a little redundant. Some of them may not really make sense for a municipality to take on. Um, and that's fine. We kind of expect that reaction anyway. Um, we, and that's why we want you guys to take a look at it. What makes sense? What doesn't make sense? What doesn't belong there? Or what maybe does belong there, but maybe needs a little tweaking, or maybe we need some that aren't even on there. You know, maybe we need more. So um, I don't know whether you've all had a chance to, to look at these or not, but um, if you want, we can either, I can either pull up what you said, Mark, or I can just take it back to the the first page and you guys can kind of start with the goal everyone should we, we we sent this out a couple times so everyone should have had a chance to look at it i don't know yep. if anyone's got specific comments or you know anything that that they that jumps right out at them at the beginning or they had some stuff but mine is mainly on the measurables why don't i go ahead and pull up that note you sent mark if you don't okay. mind sure because i mean it could kind of get us started um, let's get back to the beginning. Actually, I probably should have left the goal up so you could actually read it first. So the goal, the town will improve and expand the town's active and passive recreational resources to meet the needs of the community, encourage the use of existing and expanding recreation programs offered. And Mark, I, your comment, I'm, I'm guessing maybe you wouldn't be the only one who had the comment that, you know, active and passive resources. And, and I think that comes out of, you know, we have, um, we have parks and trails, we have playgrounds, but we also just have, you know, open spaces that, you know, like, like Miller Park, we call that a passive park because there's not, um, there's not playgrounds, there's not programs offered there, there's no swimming, there's no, you know, cabins or anything like that. Um, I think that's what that's referring yes. to. Yes, that was what was meant when uh, when that was written. It was um, pretty much Miller Park and Blue Heron Park presently, which are, we considered um, passive parks, passive activities. But it, it also would um, would include the uplands at uh, Onanda Park because that's there are no as as far as I know there are no programs that uh, that involve the uplands park. That's pretty much a hiking area and uh, uh, a trail area. <laughs> So how do you guys feel about the goal? Do you think it's fine just the way it's written or would you suggest anything be reworded? I, I, I still, it, it, that doesn't, I don't think someone picking up the plan is really gonna come up with it when they read, it, maybe it's just me, but pack, active and passive. <laughs> I don't know, a community member looking at the plan, I don't know if it's gonna jump out at them and, and really understand what that means. I, I, and maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm caught up on it. What I mean, what everybody else think? No, I think there's going to be more people that don't understand it than do understand that. So I agree with you, Mark, on that. Agreed. 
I agree, Mark, as well. Yeah. So how do we how do we simplify that goal? I mean, that's really what it's about, you know. Like when the average person looks at it, like said, "Wow, um, you know, what is park? What are parks all about?" I mean, active and passive recreational resources to meet the needs of the community seems a little bit, you know, wordy. What if you just took out active and passive? Yeah, that that makes sense to me. Just take out the towns, rec uh, yeah. so ex improve and expand the towns' recreational resources to meet the needs of the community. Right. The only thing I would love to have the world word trail in there somewhere, or expand the network of trails, or well, that, I think that should be down in uh, the actual yeah. recommended yeah. steps because yeah, you know. Step. We're saying recreational resources and trails are part of that. Parks right. and trails, the water. Yeah. I don't know. I get I get the active and passive part. Active being the town's running programs that are supervised or uh, actually creating activities versus you know people just showing up and enjoying what's there. So. I, when I read that, it, it kind of, I got it right away. I understood what they're trying to say. Maybe it could be worded differently, or clear, more clearly. That there's programs and there's areas to just enjoy. But you're an exceptional individual. Yeah. <laughs> the, I, the second sentence kind of was hard to a little bit, uh, didn't really kind of flow with the first sentence. I don't know. I, I agree with Mark's comments on that one. It just didn't seem like a complete sentence to me, but maybe that's just me. Sarah, could you click back over onto to that email? Yeah. But I mean, in, in my mind, are, are they trying to say, encourage the use of existing and any newly expanded recreational programs that are offered by the town or that may be offered by the town? I think what they're trying to say is encourage the use of existing programs that we offer and then also expand what we offer. But that's what I, I think the intention is, but it's trying to smoosh it into one sentence. But those are two completely different things too. Mm -hmm. Right. Trying to get the word out to tell people what kind of parks and what kind of programs we have at our parks and then also trying to create new programs and take care of the ones that we have right in the, in the parks and the you know so really you want to encourage and expand the use of existing recreational programs existing and new recreational programs is that yeah but not just the use of them also expand the program offerings yeah so then it should really be two different separate sentences in my, my opinion current uh, encourage the use of current uh facilities and recreation programs offered and uh expand um expand whatever you want to expand e explore expansion of programs, something like that yeah something like that yeah i like that Explore expansion of programs where feasible. Well, you might want to say encourage ex expansion of um, of parkland and programs. Mm -hmm. Sarah, are you looking for us to come up with the actual wording right now, or are you looking to take a, a recommendation back to the, the committee working on this? Um, I'm just taking notes about the kind of stuff you guys are saying, and I'll talk to Eric about it, and we'll play with the rewording of it. Okay. Um, I mean, you guys will get a chance to see this again. Okay. The CIC is also looking at it, and a bunch of other committees too, so we're going to kind of gather what everybody said, um, update the draft and then send it back out. Okay, I mean, we could sit here and wordsmith it for hours, I think. It's yeah, not... but I mean, I have notes about what you guys are all but, saying. So I think no. either Eric or both of us 
we'll be able to come up with something that hopefully does a better job of capturing right okay <laughs> So any, any thoughts then on the measurables? Do we think as a committee that um, the number of people um, taking part in a program is the most important measurable? It seems to be what that's implying. If you read the comments- are in, in order. If you read the comments about the new parks, um, many people verbalized exactly that. They want to know. They want to know how many people are going into these parks. How many people are using them on a regular mm -hmm. basis? How many people are active in the different programs that we offer? Um, so I, I think we have to, for now, use that as the measurable because uh, this is what. People want to see. They want to. They want to see numbers. And the data well, we have available, um, we we can track use of Onanda during the season when the gatehouse of, is open, um, because then we do know how many people are coming in. Um, but we can't, you know, when the gatehouse is closed. And that's also true for all of the other parks. You know, people yeah. come and go. There's no counters or anything. Um, but we do, we can easily track program attendance. You know, right. the kids who come to the programs, um, when we hold them, um, those, those are all tracked, um, obviously. And then the town clerk rental data, that's all tracked. Um, and the number of programs we have, obviously that's easy to track. And the, and the idea behind this is over time, you know, we have a baseline, you know, what do we offer now? And then we can look at it again, you know, well, have we increased our offerings in five years? Yeah, we had three new programs and, you know, we, we added two more cabins or something. I, I think it's important to quantify that because just, just in the whole park thing that's going on right now, I mean, that question overwhelmingly came up that Onanda was tremendously underutilized. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah. if we have an answer to that, I think it's important. I, I don't think we want to like ax programs, but, but honestly, you know, um, if programs are not well attended, we need to move to something else because they're not popular anymore. So we, unfortunately we have to, we have to go with that, you know, wh wherever the wind blows. Mm -hmm. The thing I we also can't do is, is just general park usage for all the rest of the parks it just right it's you know you can have a well, conversation about yeah. it but we don't have data in informal surveys I, I can tell you that butler yeah. beach is crowded very yeah. often I, I it's that's that that is frequently extremely crowded agreed i mean i and i i hear what people are saying about onanda being underutilized but i think it just depends on the time of day and the day of the week that you're there my In kids the go to the In yeah the weather my, yeah my kids go to summer camp at onanda and have for years and during the summer on a weekday between 9 a.m and 3 onanda park is packed it's crazy with kids yeah um, yeah and yeah. then you know on a nice day on the weekend the beach is pretty busy during the day Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't think it's underutilized. I mean, I think that's what we, I think we have to get those numbers together so we can defend that position. And, and yeah. Randy, I agree with you. Like I ride my bike by there when the, when the lifeguards are gone and the park is closed and there's 50 people on, on Butler road, you know what yeah. I mean? So there's no way to quantify that. So, right. mm -hmm. I mean, we, we have to make those notations. Yeah. I think we're blessed with Onanda being large in size, which might make, people feel like it's underutilized, but it, it's, it's utilized all year round too. Yeah. You know, and then the uplands too, it depends mm -hmm. on what you would call underutilized. People mm -hmm. go there to hike. They don't really want a crowded trail when there's mm -hmm. more than four cars in the parking lot. I consider the trails to be busy, you know, me too. So another anyway. question I had on the measurables, um, I, is there a way we can somehow quantify um, trail connections being made, like continuous mileage? I think right now, one of the most important things we're doing is, is connecting these trails to larger trail networks and connecting these hubs as opposed to just straight up mileage. So continuous miles of trails that are unbroken. I, was, I would think that that would be a, a useful measurable. In addition measurable. to total miles. I don't know what the rest of the committee thinks. 
good either either way i mean if, if if we're if we're looking at mileage you know additional mileage well, added or i i do think that is what she is saying i do think i personally think that's important to be able to get on a trail one spot and continually go into another spot without having to break that is as, right. as opposed to just as opposed to just we have so many miles of trails as opposed to i can get on at ananda and i can end up um you know in victor and that's that to me that's important yeah right and that one won't change very often but yeah but and i think it's, i guess it would just be i guess it would just be one measure one one number well, that's, what's the that's longest more, continuous yeah. connected trail connected trail that we have in the town right interconnected yeah which is going to be different and separate than what's our total mileage not necessarily because you know if for example we were able to connect like miller park over to um the overlook park or something like that you know like that would be a something that's not necessarily connected until maybe we could connect that to outhouse park you know what i mean i think it just kind of helps to have us having this connection minded program, particularly with the Auburn trail coming in. I mean, that's going to be a big change when we finally connect Auburn trail to outhouse park and on through. So. Yeah. Connected to other neighboring towns and trail. Yeah. You still want to keep the, the other one that's already on there. Number of trails and the mileage of the trails, total mileage. That will change. Measurable. If we add more trails, it'll go up. Yeah, I don't have a problem with it. it it's an easy measurable. I mean, right. The, MRB no. has a map that has it already for us. So they already, they keep that for us. So what about the water trail? Now that I don't know. Now, would you just, just an additional statistic, I, miles of the water trail? I, 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 th or... I think you could add the water trail to that, but I also think you could add, uh, have a continuous updating of a map of the trail systems, uh, bike, pedestrian, and water. I had the same thing thought for later when we're talking about the goals. I think we need to have an interactive trails map that includes yeah, I do too. Um, some wayfinding signage as well, you know, just interactive uh, online uh, with the water trail and the trails. I think that's really a big missing component that we should start thinking about. That sounds like an action item. Mm -hmm, an and action I don't know item it's rather list, than a measurable, but, yeah. Yeah, to hold that thought. <laughs> It's on my little piece of paper, so I'll hold it. <laughs> what about the rest of these measurables? Do you guys see any that you'd like to see disappear that you don't think are useful? I, I guess, it, and I had a lot of comments there on, on when you look at the action steps about the Community Recreation League, and I, I guess I'm, I'm, maybe I'm too caught up thinking that we're talking about the youth sports leagues in, in, those types of activities, I, I don't know. I think that's what it's referring to. Mm -hmm. and, and I, I mean, when we when we look down at the um, at the action steps, I'm not sure that I'm not sure the youth community leagues want much interaction with the town other than a place to play their games on a field that's well kept. I, I don't. Yeah. It, so I mean, that's it, you guys have to say. You know, is is measuring how many community based you know, that are run by outside programs or other, or sorry, entities like, like Castle, like the soccer programs and stuff. Mm -hmm. Do we want to measure that? Do we want to track that? Or I think we do because yeah, do. We're, we're, we're always held accountable to these numbers, like how many people are using. Well, if you can say, well, you know, we have five fields at blah, 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 and there's, you know, 4,000 kids playing soccer on it. I mean, that, that's, that's a good number. And, and the, those are the kind of numbers that exist. But, but I agree 100% with that. 100% but, but, I agree with that. But, but I guess that that's not, maybe that is field usage number, which is a number that we could generate because in order to use those fields, you've got to reserve them. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's number of reservations on those fields that's actually generated now, probably with that new online program. Yeah. But it's, all, but it's also the availability to use those fields. We have them. People are going to use them. That's what we want them to do. 
But Mark, in order in order to make the case to get more fields, you've got to say ten thousand kids are using the fields. Well, you know what I mean. That's, I guess that's, that's, I guess we we've talked about that um, having a, a extending outhouse um, outhouse what north to add more fields. Dave brought that up once before, and. Um, you can do that by knowing, all you have to do is know the number of leagues the, and the membership of those leagues and just keep track of that. And, um, or you might wanna keep field track, keep, uh, keep track of how many, how, often, how many hours of use the fields have too. But I don't know how you're gonna do that. That's- um, See, I think that's the easier number to use because in order to use those fields, you have to reserve them to the town. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they ha they have that information then. Well, that so that's, that's yeah that so that's I hear an you guys easy... saying you want to keep it. Yes, some yeah. Form. I, I think it's an easy number to get. It's just a question of what what number we use. Right, which the, number the long you run. Want. Right, exactly. Can you scroll down to the to the next page there? Yeah, then, are we done with measurables? Yeah. I, well, I would I would also add to that that it, it's not the number of leagues in the membership, but it's it's the amount of of usage that we're having for the time town facility i mean that that's that's the measurable is, is how often we're using those fields but it's membership's also important because okay. we have we have people wanting to know how many people are using our facilities so if you have um a soccer league that has 400 members that's 400 members of the community that are using our town park facilities. And, and I think that's an important just, number. Then just add to that measurable field usage yep. or some sort of measure of how often the fields are being reserved. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I have a note of that too. So. I, I, think, I think we're all in agreement. We're just questioning what number we're going to use on that. Um, you know, one thing I would love to see, and it's, it's very self-serving, is I, I know Doug was talking about trying to get like roadside bike paths. That, that's nowhere in any of our things here. Like, like, can we get bike paths on town roads that we're going? I mean, that should be an objective of ours to make, you know, bicycling more safe and so running. That's, it is in the yeah. comp, comp plan, but it fell under transportation. It's, several places. Yeah, it came up quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's part of the transportation plan. Well, it, it does make a lot of sense because a lot of people are biking. A lot of people are biking. Mm -hmm. You drive around. I mean, that was the number people. that was like in that was one of the top, um, you know, objections about Westlake Road. It's not safe to do. Yeah. Blah, 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 yeah. You know? yeah, it's true. Well, Which it's is not safe to do anything on Westlake Road. I mean, it's it's that's that is, that's not good. It's not about a park. It's about private landowners who have parties and people are parking all over Westlake Road and people are trying to walk and bike on it also. Westlake Road is not conducive to that, period. Not a town-owned road. I mean, that's the problem. We, we... Correct. <laughs> um, so I do have a, a little bit of a question in relation to that as well. And I, it might be in the transportation section. I'm not sure. Do we have anybody assigned anywhere to come up with the thing that nobody wants to do, which is a plan for sidewalk maintenance? Is, is that anywhere in this comp plan? I can't remember, but I think that would fall under transportation. Yes, I do too. Okay. Because I, I know got, nobody wants it, but it needs to be answered. So I got another thing from measurables on that. Um, there's a lot of information online. Uh, reviews and ratings of the parks that, that we could glean and use to measure, you know, effectiveness and, and their popularity. That's true. Every park gets a rating from unsolicited opinions from people that visit the park. Mm -hmm. I hope we can glean that data and use that to measure success. Kind of like a satisfaction rating? Yeah. I mean, that. You know, businesses use that type of stuff for, you know, analytics to build their business. So, uh, but what would the number be? The number of people who say they like it? Well, Five there's stars. people that visit, visit that park, particular site online. There's people that posted reviews. Like Ananda Park has almost 400 reviews 
on just Google alone. Um, and then you give a you know a star rating on your experience or whatever. So yes, yeah, sir. What if what if you put like um, like a, a QR code reader at every park to review the park? I mean, what what would yeah. be the harm of that? I encourage that. Right. Right. But I mean, Everyone's but email. are you suggesting that the town come up with a software platform online to collect those reviews or are you saying we direct them to Google or something? I, I, I think we do that in-house because we like to control that. But, but you know what I'm saying? I, I, I think that I think Dan brings up a great point. I think a lot of people are pretty happy and, and we're not capturing that data. Yeah, and honestly, no, I, yeah. I wasn't questioning whether we point. should cap capture it or use it but i was just saying you know a statistical measurable what statistic would be gathering how many people well, gave a favorable review or you know well right there's i mean review google for example has stars i mean right now i just looked it up onanda park and it's a very good point dan onanda park has a 4.6 star review uh, for the overall average uh, of the google maps reviewers so so we that's could put, yeah. as a measurable, we could put collect online uh, satisfaction data. Yeah, I think that's great, Karen. Yeah, yeah I, I think that's a good idea. I actually, I, I agree. So, so somehow make a, make a measurable of review of online uh, review platforms or something. I mean, R report on on we could just issue a report on online reviews, you know, like what yeah. star rating we're getting with. Yeah. But uh, Dave makes a good point that we could encourage that by giving it easy by with a QR code. That'd be great. And just a little sign and right. say if you like your like your visit, please give us a review. Right. I, I think that's the way to go. I mean, if you put that there, people are going to jump all over that. I mean, yeah. both both positively and and probably more negatively. But we want to know that, you know. Exactly. Very good point, Dan. Thanks for bringing that up. Does, does that become an action step of some type? And then lead to a measurable yeah you know i mean it depends on how we do it right so if we want to just collect the data that's already out there that just kind of organically happened because people started leaving reviews um then it's not really an action step up it's more of just right. a measurable but if we're talking you know the town creating something be it on our facebook pages or on our website somewhere where people can leave a star rating or review for each park, um, then that would be an action step because that doesn't exist. How Which hard would is eventually it? create data that we could use as a measurable. How, how hard is it to create something like that? I, 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 I struggle with what a QR, whatever code is, but. Oh, the QR codes, you can create them in a minute, but um, those are easy, but where it directs to is the question. Yeah. But I doesn't don't know it make if our website has the capability to do polls um, but I think the Facebook page does. I don't know exactly how it would work, but um, I'm. Why, why sure wouldn't we do, do that, though? I mean, why wouldn't we do that? I mean, you, you know what I mean? If, if it takes some amount of money or whatever, it's giving us a measurable that we'll have for people who are at the park. I mean, you have to scan the QR code so you're at the park. So it's not a question of, you know, whether you were there or not. You're writing some review. It, it seems to me like that, that's something we definitely would like to do. It's I a, would certainly like to see that. It's a good counter. Yeah. I think to me it sounds more like an action step because it kind of yeah. sounds like, maybe we need to make something or change something that we have to make it useful for the way you we want to capture it the, the you could also just add something to the parking passes the pro of just directing yeah, them to google the pro of just directing them to google is that you know you pump up your numbers on a site that's publicly available to just any anybody any bystander so anybody coming to the park who doesn't know anything about our facebook page or someone in North Carolina is just Googling the area. Um, they might see, oh, geez, they got 3,000 reviews on this, this park alone. Um, and, it's, and, it's, and then you know, that's, that's an easy no-brainer. You just QR code directly to the Google site, and you're done. So, uh, yeah, I, th I think we should put it, it 
we can move on to the action steps after this if you want because yeah. i i think we should put that on there because it sounds like something that might take a little doing um if everybody's okay i'll go ahead and move down there now i think we talked about yeah. all of them um I did want to add the what Karen and I were saying before about the possibility of an interactive trail map. And I had a question about the bringing up the outlet trail there. Um, sounds interesting, but we've never discussed anything about doing anything on the outlet in our committee before. Just remember these came out of those community meetings. So the it was pie in the sky, anything goes kind of ideas. Are you, are you talking about the canal way challenge? Adeline? No, I'm not. There was a, I forget where it is, but something somewhere in here says about building. Yeah, there it is. Purchase lands, access rights surrounding the Canandaigua outlet and oh. take advantage as a recreational asset. The canal way challenge and such sounds, I, I looked into that as well. That looks interesting and I, I like the suggestion. And, but the lazy Iron Man is no longer. So that has to be deleted. Well, and, and I guess my initial thought looking at the recommended action steps is what were there, 20 of them or something? It, it seemed to me like several of those could be combined into, um, like I consolidated a couple and in, instead of having one action step to uh, acquire lake access, um, and another action item to, to explore uh, things along the outlet. How about one thing that says, continue to explore options to acquire land and or access rights to Canandaigua Lake and the area along Canandaigua Outlet. But to be able to take maybe two or three of these, um, it, it, it just seems, the more I read it just seemed like there were more and more and more action yeah. steps and when you look mm -hmm. back through all 10 goals I just felt it was such an overwhelming document that you know it, it just seemed to me like maybe there could be a, a spot for consolidation. Well and to your earlier point I, I don't know if we need to provide in administrative support for sports for example I don't see right. that that's yeah that's kind of and I'm trying to look uh, I mean, I, I could see, I, I get the creation of informal sports leagues, maybe like a, you know, a, a league that plays basketball or a, a bocce ball or, you know, I like the bocce ball, ball league. Right. <laughs> that, that all comes down to beer. Everybody wants beer there, but Ooh, no beer me. in the town parks, <laughs> but, but even like hold and support music in our events. Um, I, I'm trying to, because uh, I, I came up with another one. So instead of separating those out in, the, in, in a specific about the, the lazy challenge or whatever, promote and encourage use of town parks and facilities for community-based activities, including but not limited to music and art events, informal sports leagues, outdoor challenges, hiking, senior activities, fishing, and boating. That, that tied like five action steps together. Yeah, the, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a winner, Mark. Yeah. Thanks it, for writing that up. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like yeah, it. Yeah, you're going to write How's that, that? down. <laughs> no, I, I, I'll email my list. I, I just sat and played with some of them, and it, it just seemed like um, partner with the city of Canandaigua, Ontario County, New York State, and other local agencies to take advantage of possible funding sources and shared opportunities to increase public park space and recreational opportunities. It, 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 it just seemed like provide trails along stormwater. I think I, I tied that. Oh, improve and expand existing trail structure yeah. and access through use of open space monies, po possible conservation easements mm -hmm. by utilizing existing storm and public water easements. Mm -hmm. it, yeah. It seemed like that captured maybe three of the other ones that, that were floating around there. Yeah, and, and I agree. I, I think there's a lot of opportunity to consolidate. I do have a question though. Do you want to keep the um, increasing access to waterfront as its own. Since yes. it's such a special idea, you know, it's, it's. In our, in our current climate, thing. I would say yes. You know, separate from just 
increasing park land. That one specifically kind of deserves its own attention. Continue to explore options to acquire land and or access rights to Canandaigua Lake and the area along Canandaigua Outlet. Does that, does that put the lake and the outlet together as one? Is that, yes. is that combining? My question is, do we, do we want to do it along the outlet? I mean, I, I'm not saying I don't. I just, we've never even talked about that before. I think it comes out of the fact that people, they want to paddle it and they can't. Sarah, could you find that? Could you scroll to that one on yeah. there? There's something there where the outlet is actually. Yeah, it's the one Adeline was talking about. It's down here. I, I, I don't think I don't have a, a, I have a problem with trying to expand it there, but it's the only place I've seen that ever discussed in the trails committee, the parks committee or anything is this uh, uh, CIC plan. And I, I've I, never, just, I've, I agree. I've never seen it uh, either. And I, have, I've, I don't recall it ever being discussed. And frankly, um, the outlet, the only outlet that the town would have access to is north of the city. And um, it only has water in it certain times of the year. It does mm -hmm. not always got water in it. And sometimes they have to work at, at uh, like when, they, when Shortsville holds their water derby, mm -hmm. they have to actually open the gates from the lake to yeah. provide enough water to have a derby. Um, I'm not sure the rest of the outlet, I, is, I mean, part of it's in the city and they use that for fishing, but the minute you get to town property, I don't think it's, I frankly wouldn't want the liability of making it accessible, to be honest with you. I'm just concerned about it as an action item when we haven't discussed it at all. Do you know what I mean? So that's. Well, an action item of explore options, you know, to gain access. Oh, I don't think we want to eliminate that. I mean, wh where does town property start? Does it start at, over the railroad bridge that goes over on Ontario Pathways? Is that about it? For that. Frasca Before that? collision is about town line there. What is? Frasca, the old the and, transfer Henderson station. Place. So it's the B place. It's, yeah. it's well yeah. so it's yeah. the it's yeah, it's the baseball parks. It's it's right there is where you right. Know that. I mean, that's, that's all that, that has water in it. You know, I, I am home. there fairly frequently and I've paddled that myself in kayaks and in all different months. I mean, I, I don't think we want to eliminate that if that's, that's the, the, you know, that's what people are thinking. But I mean, it's like Mark said, it's, it's, it's one of the things we're looking at. Yeah. I've paddled it too. That's a great water trail. It'd be nice to, open that up so I whenever I went in there I felt like I was trespassing because I had to find my own entry point and exit point and, right you, know, you feel like you're always on private property you know like right. somebody's going to come out and start yeah. and there are some necks along there so you, you worry are. about getting shot at so so <laughs> I think it would be nice to have a have a spot to put a uh, canoe or kayak in along there it'd be nice right it, that's it's all fine. I just it, it's odd to see an action item on something that we've never brought up as a committee. So, but that's well, it's because it I'm, came from the community. Right, you know? right, there's a lot yeah, of and I'm ha I'm happy to explore it. I just uh, you know just wanted to toss it out there. So. Here, the the, the well, town what about, line goes, just leave it the way Mark suggested. The, the, town line, as, the town line travels right down County Road Ten. It looks like and shoots mm -hmm. straight across that roundabout. Mm -hmm. It crosses the outlet straight right by that roundabout. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, maybe there is the potential to have access and, 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 you know, right along the outlet there to put a kayak in or, or wow, you'd want to take it out there, but unless you're going to paddle upstream, but so, so something, something again, that says, hold on, I lost my list. I got too many windows open. Um, Continue to explore options to acquire land and or access rights to Canandaigua Lake and the area along Canandaigua Outlet. I agree with that statement. Yeah, I'm good with that. Fine. Yep. Works. I 
I move that next time we have Mark McNeil write up our action steps. Totally. Yeah, and Mark, you are going to send those to me, right? I, I will. Okay. I will. Because <laughs> nice I didn't write there. everything you said. <laughs> He's recording this, so. I, I don't know. It, it just came out of the fact when I, all of a sudden, yeah. I felt overwhelmed looking at this great big long list. Mm -hmm. And then it seemed like, you know, most items could get squished together and mm -hmm. um, continue the implementation of the 2018 Parks and Recreation Master Plan, which includes goals and recommendations for all town parks. Rather than creating a separate plan for Onanda Park, mm -hmm. I mean, shouldn't we be Part of me thinks that a, that a huge piece of this comp plan should be, we paid for a parks master plan, you know, that in 2018, it seems like that should be a huge focus of the mm -hmm. comp plan is, is continuing with those identified goals rather than creating a whole bunch of new goals. I absolutely yeah. agree. Yeah, I agree too. It, it should reference the plan that we already have. Oh shoot, sorry, dog's excited. <laughs> Must be those action steps that I was reading off. I'm trying to knock my table over because I'm ignoring him. Um, yeah, I mean, there's that you could cross out several by combining them this way. Um, let's see. Uh, I think we jumped around a little bit. Should I go back up to the other page and see if we skipped over any? What about the ones that talk about, so like this one that says continue like providing administrative support for sports. I think it's just referencing that we work with the sports leagues for the, their use of our fields and stuff, but you know, um, I, I don't know if it's intending to mean anything more than that, but I got the feeling from your email the other day, Mark, that you were kind of in agreement with what I've heard from some other people is, you know, does the town really need to be involved in more involved with these sports groups than we already are or other than just offering a place for them to, to play? Well, first, first of all, I don't know who it, the town has enough time to, to do, to manage that. I know how busy any, I mean, half of the people here tonight have, have tried running the sport, some of the local sports leagues and, the last person we want to do is suddenly try to reach out to the to the town. And if I'm reaching out to the town, it's because I want a good field that to be able to play on. Is you know, I, Castle doesn't want to, you know, to talk to someone at the town to partner in their goals. I th I think what this means is just keep. Don't they have to have? Uh, don't they have to let the town know if they're going to reserve a field? I think that's, yeah, that's the information the that, that they're talking about gathering. Uh, well, I mean, this is a, this is an action step. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of them, one of them actually said assist in their goals. Yeah. You know, yeah. To me, yeah. that, that implied more than administrative. I mean, spell that out. The action step is to provide a, a well-maintained field. That That's what, that's mm -hmm. what Castle and La Crosse want is a, is a, they don't want it flooded. They, they, they would love a spot maybe that the town came in and, and you know, did a little bit of turf work. I mean, the, the city spends hours and hours on, on um, what's, what's the Northeast Park, you know, in, in mm -hmm. resods it. And, and I don't ever, remember the, the town going to, to Outhouse Park and fixing up any of those fields or, I mean, if you look at the baseball field at, at Cheshire Park, or not Cheshire, Pierce Park, I mean, Pierce. I don't think it's safe to play softball there. Right. <laughs> you know, th those types of maintenance. Mm -hmm. it, so so the, maybe so these goals, like I see the two on this page probably could be combined into one that says something more along the lines of providing the space, continue to find you know explore options for providing increased spaces for these leagues to play rather than trying to be involved in there wouldn't it make more sense to do something like you know monitor youth participation in the sports for example because i know 
you know, obviously there's been changes over time and how many kids are involved with lacrosse versus baseball, for example. So there's going to be currently we've got a bigger draw for lacrosse and soccer fields than we have for baseball or software fields, for example. So I, yeah, I, think, and I think the measurables that we were right. talking about yeah. kind of cover that mm -hmm. as far as action steps, you know, I think it's just monitoring and, and being available to the sports programs as opposed to really helping them. Because we goals. already have partnerships with them in a way. Yeah, we, exactly. They rent space. Mark, what I hear you saying is maybe an action step would be to find or improve the fields. To, to continue to, to, to yeah. I'll, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll try to jot down another one. So, but. Go for it. But yeah, but, but along those lines, and, and I, I really think that's what the youth teams want is, is a, is a well-maintained facility that they can sign up and use when they want. And, and that's the support that I think they would like from the town. Agreed. Some of these can. I agree. Yep. Yeah. Oh, some of these could be combined in what our main purpose is, and that is to provide um, parkland, um, playing fields, facilities, and playgrounds that are well maintained um, and, and whatever, and expand on that and just have one thing, because that's what we're here for, is to provide these things. Um, we're not going, to, I'm not going to, maybe you guys are going to go stand at a playing field and see if the, how many people are out there and uh, monitor it. We're not, we're not, we don't have the, the capability of monitoring all of these parklands and playing fields when they're in use. But we do have the capability of providing uh, ongoing maintenance, cleaning, um, and safety measurements for all of our parklands and uh, facilities, playing fields and playgrounds and you swimming know, areas. Something you just said, Karen, kind of might work as um, a way to improve that goal statement at the top. Provide parkland facilities and playgrounds that are well maintained for use by the community. I don't, that's not exactly what you said, but something along those lines might be kind of what you guys were looking for in your goal statement. I thought what Karen just said was more of a goal than an action step, but I do agree with that. We're providing the opportunity for people to use the parks that are safe and well-maintained. Yeah, I might steal some of that phrasing when we look at reworking your goal, the goal at the beginning, the goal statement at the beginning of this section. <laughs> I don't think I can repeat it. <laughs> I, I wrote down some of it. It's on YouTube. That's right. <laughs> That's right. This is all being recorded. And immortalized recorded. forever. <laughs> um, in, in the interest of time, I, I mean, I, I think, is there anything else that jumped out at anybody? And again, I'll send along, I, I think I captured most of all the action steps and combined them. The only one that I had issues with was, I didn't think that this was the spot for the, um, if you could scroll back the other, the other way, um, or oh, the right, up or down, uh, right there, uh, create educational program for conserved areas. That seemed to me like more on, wasn't there an environmental goal or wasn't there a, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. saw that note you made. I agree. Yeah. Um, I think in our natural resources section, it does talk about yeah, sure. yeah. programming and, mm -hmm. and education and our environmental That's conservation board already does that and plans to continue doing stuff like that. So yeah, it seems like that'd be a good fit there. I'll make a note. Just, just a thought was, was uh, parks represented on the comp plan, um, writing the comp plan? Yes. I, I'm on the committee. Karen, we, we need to talk, I think. <laughs> oh, well, what, what did you attend any of the um, uh, public meetings? I, I did not, but I think there's a, girl, a lot, there's a lot of, 
<laughs> a lot Most of public meetings. I, I, I just think we, we need to get more active as a committee in these things. You, you, you know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I'm, a, I'm as guilty as everyone else. So in the future, we, we need to put a couple people or more on those kind of committees to, yeah. to make sure that they're on, we're on the right track. And, and I agree with that. The, the, the thing is, the, the parks and recreation part, when, because the um, parks and recreation master plan is so recent, we decided to use the items in that. And that's where the bulk of this came from. The only, um, the only uh, difference was uh, increasing access to the waterfront through purchase zoning and other means, because that is that was something we heard repeatedly, both in the surveys that we took and in the um, the public meetings that, that we had, and uh, we just you know we want more access to the lake is what it is. And it wasn't access to the outlet, it was access to the lake that people asked for. So pretty much everything else came from the Parks and Rec uh, master plan that had just been developed, what, 2018, two years ago? Yeah. Well, I, I think we can firm up a lot of, at least again, the, the park section. Um, and again, I know Sarah, you're, you're very open to any other um, comments on the rest of the plan. I mean, maybe as individuals, we could, if we had comments, we could share those with Sarah individually about the other parts of the plan, just so we can move on to our next thing. The one thing I want to point out is senior recreation programming, where we're going to have to be active in doing that um, once this pandemic's over. Frankly, there is still a senior group. There's eight people that meet on a regular basis um, to do games and uh, cards, and uh, we just don't meet at any park, um, although we would like to. <laughs> um, you know, there's, uh, I mean, I, I scrolled down a little bit. You can see that there is an action step for that. Do yes. you feel like that one? And then there was also one about making the, um, programs and facilities more accessible. Um, do you feel like those still need their own action items? Or I, I, those I think the senior programming does, but making it accessible is part of providing a park because that's the law. They're supposed right. to be right. accessible and they're and supposed to be maintained. Uh, yeah. That was in the, not comp plan, um, parks master plan over and over again. Exactly, right. yeah. So I, but as far as, as an action step, that would be part of providing a, a safe, uh, well-maintained parks and right. facilities. So any, any others jump out at anybody? Any other comments they had from, from looking it over? Sarah, did you, did you get enough, you think, to, to take back to the um, comp plan committee, the, the group? Yeah. Um, and really what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to gather them and go to Eric with them directly because he's going to take the stuff from the committee, the comp plan committee, and from your committee, and from the CIC, and the ag committee. Now, all the comments that were received after this first draft and incorporate them into a revised draft um, and then it'll come back. So you guys will get to see the revised version too. Okay. And you know, you, you mentioned the, the comp plan as a whole, the, I don't know if when we shared, when we first started talking about this, I guess it was December, if I shared the link to the whole plan, but I can do that. And anyone who wants to take a look at it um, is more than welcome. I, I highly think encouraged was, i think it wasn't a link i did send out a, a link to the whole thing but again it wouldn't hurt to send it out again okay i have kind of gathered a long list of things that i mentioned i would share with you guys so i can kind of send that in one email and i know mark you you send minutes and stuff do you want me to send something to you that you can share when you send the minutes out you might be quicker sending it out than I send out the minutes. 
Is that a challenge? <laughs> no, that's knowing my limitations. Um, okay, so because I, I can't remember what it was, but I wrote a couple times down, share this, share that. So I'll put that stuff together. And, and That'd be awesome. Okay. And then when you send that, that will, will remind me to do it, do the minutes. Okay. <laughs> um, so are we good? Everybody good with the comp plan? And, and nope. a timeline for this. I don't, I don't have a timeline for when um, these comments will be incorporated. Eric, as you guys all know, Eric Cooper, our town planner who's been working on this is no longer a full-time employee here at the town. He's moved to Buffalo and he's taken a job as the planner for, the, for Niagara Falls. Um, but he's still working on a part-time basis with us to help us wrap up this comp plan. But it could mean that it slows down a bit. Um, I mean, I'm gonna help him with it, but he's doing the bulk of it. So I don't know exactly when I'll be able to get back to you guys and show you, hey, here's what, here's what it looks like now. But I will, I will keep you posted. Thank you. Um, so anyway, so, so next thing then, um, town code. So again, Doug is looking to, to get from us kind of our, our general uh, uh, impressions of the changes that were made. It, it, it's not something where he's looking for us to go through each one of those changes and say that this should be expressed this way or that way. He said it's kind of the next step is to go to the lawyer um, to look it over and then it goes through the ordinance committee a couple of times and then it would come back to us after they've looked at it. So I don't know if anybody had any kind of uh, general thoughts, suggestions, or little pieces that jumped out at them that, that didn't make a lot of sense? I did not have a chance to look at that, Mark, yet. Um, I can't find my copy of, of it, Mark. Isn't there a part in there that says that we as a committee should be um, making uh, suggestions about um, maintenance and improvements and uh, do you have it right in front of you? Uh, I'm trying to find the right file here. I printed it off, but I can't find it. Um, uh, there we go. Purpose, da, 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 part. Monitor implementation of the adopted town of Canandaigua Parks and Recreation Master Plan. Um, adopted documents relating to parks or trails or recreational facilities, including annual reporting. Um, just scrolling through quick regulations. I mean, basically what it, what it says is that we do report to the town board with, with our recommendations. So, um, but, but yeah, we're, it, not, we're not able to make recommendations on what specific types of maintenance should be done. Uh, you know, some, some of it is like, would you have known it needed a new septic system down on, no, no, at no, Camp no, no. I mean, they, Yeah, They're not looking for those, but, but they might be looking for, um, you know, when, when, we, when we ride by and we notice that maybe the, the, um, the pavilions really are starting to look pretty shabby and maybe, you know, maybe we would recommend that we put some, you know, time and effort into updating the pavilions or things like that. I, I, I mean, Tr Troy's, you know, all over top of the, no, yeah. we're, we're not expected, you know, that the electrical needs rewiring or something yeah, like that. That's, that's what I mean. Yeah. I think it's something that's obvious that you can see, like sometimes, like at Pierce Park, it's like, oh my gosh, look at all those weeds growing through the mulch. Yeah. Hey, maybe we should yeah. do a better yeah. job. Right. Okay. So those, okay. those types of general things is all that they're expecting. Okay. So anybody have any other thoughts on anything that was added?
I did. Mark, Mark I, I noticed that uh, what section is this? 152 dash six items N and P seem to conflict with each other. So that's all I, all I had. Bolt launching. So, so I, is, is N specific to motorized craft? And then what did you say N and P? P, yeah. So N says it's prohibited between April and November. And then it says it's permitted in P, permitted from November to April. Permitted only from November to April. And N says it's prohibited between April and November. Yeah, I, I wonder, yeah, that, and I know because Doug did mention that, that the hope is to have that Onanda open more. So I, I will, I will okay. talk to Doug about N and so, yeah. No, I think, I think it's right. I think I read it wrong. I think it's fine. Never mind. It's permitted between November and April. It's prohibited between April and November. Oh, oh yes, yes, you're right. Yeah, and, and and that's what they do. Once once the park season starts down there, they close that gate. Yep. Got so, it. so that, but then after November fifteenth, if if uh, somebody had a small fishing boat, they could back in and use the launch down there. So, in in the the, the part that I think was taken out was it used to be. Only they could only use that launch if it was iced up on the north end or something. But now they've oh. extended it. Now they've extended. It. So it's like, well, why do you have to? Why only if it's iced up? So I think it, now it's it's allowing more use of of that um, boat ramp. That's so, good. And the other the other addition, the big piece is um, adding the ability that the facility alcohol beverage permit did anybody look over that and we've been discussing that really for quite a while but but the fact that they are trying to develop a set of rules not not an open you know an open policy i know doug talked to members of the town board on this and the lawyer and the insurance company and every everybody else and this is kind of what they arrived at is some rules that if if there was um the occasion to have a, an event down there uh if you know rotary wanted to to do a some sort of event or, or even hold a, a a wedding reception or those types of events that that there is a mechanism to get a permit to to be able to serve alcohol i mean it, it's not you know let's have a super bowl party and and get a keg of beer easy but it's at least there's a, a mechanism in place for someone that wants to um you know, have, have, have an event down there. So. Randy, nothing about the beer at the park. Sure. Picking on the little guy again. <laughs> I mean, I think that's a good idea for, you know, increasing utilization of certainly those uh, facilities at Onanda. I mean, it, it, it only makes sense. I'd, I'd like to see it be more liberal than that, but I guess we'll keep kicking the can down the road. And in, in, in I guess that was my general impression too, is that maybe this is a starting point. And if we see that it's, isn't a problem, may, maybe then we revise the town code and, and you know, we, we, we take over Onanda and make some improvements and maybe then we wanna expand it and change it and do a little bit different. But I think this is a good starting point and maybe a small bite to, to start with. I'm sure those bocce players that I, when I drive through Onanda that have those red solo cups, not Onanda, not Onanda, Did I say Onanda? I meant Outhouse. Yep. The, uh, I'm sure they're drinking Kool-Aid. Lemonade. Lemonade. Maybe Long Island iced teas. But. Well, it, but, but, but here's, here's the truth of the matter is nobody's policing it. And if, if, you, if you're responsible, you know, nobody's... You're not an idiot. Right. Correct. So, so I, I think this is a good avenue to get started with it, so... Would, would the general consensus be that, that by and large, we're pretty good with the concepts, the way they're changed and, and no big issues? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. I'll, I'll pass that along to Doug. So um, I'm almost down to the end of my list here, Sarah. So um, 
I guess the only other thing that I had um, really that I wanted to go over, it, it, kind of a focus for this next year also, it, 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 as far as the planning stages is um, looking at the uplands at Onanda, we, we talked about things like a, a driveway change and um, there was a lot of discussion about maybe a new cabin. There's a cabin there that's in really rough shape. Um, but I, I think it would, it would be a good idea if, I know it's a tough time of year, but definitely start to familiarize yourself with the layout of the uplands, even if it's through looking at, you know, an aerial map and, and tracing the borders. And, um, you know, there's the potential, and I know there's been some di discussion about if, if, if you look at Ontario County Park, you know how they've, they've put some of those um, prefab cabins back in the woods. And so there's there's some discussion about maybe trying to utilize the uplands more like that and have, you know, a, 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 a nice cabin placed here and there and, and maybe make more use of that. So um, that's just a goal that we need to be thinking about and, and, and be ready to maybe tackle that. And um, Sarah, it seems like MRB maybe even is working on some site design plans or some some ways to utilize the uplands a little bit better yeah i think there was a resolution on one of the last town board meetings or there's going to be that allowed them to take a look at that um i know when we first started talking about it i said just don't ruin my sledding hill yeah <laughs> so oh. in that communication folder there was a comment about some pretty nasty graffiti somewhere up on, in the upland um, area. And uh, I'm not capable of walking that trail, but uh, so I don't really know what it is, but who, who takes care of, who's, is someone going to take care of that? Yeah, it's not the first time. Um, sometimes we don't know, kids, whatever, do paint stuff up on that overlook that's above the waterfall. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, they've been doing it a lot. We paint over it from time to time, and that's probably what what they'll end up doing. Troy or someone who's working with Troy will probably paint over it. Okay. Um, the, the the only other thing, and and I just want to add real quick is I think it's important that that we as a group make sure that we're referring back to that parks master plan. So I'll send the link back out. It is, you can find it on the, on the town uh, website, but I, I thought maybe if we had our homework for, for between now and the next meeting was to look back through some of the goals and I'll touch base with Doug about maybe some of the short-term things and see where we stand on what has gotten done. And I mean, we're, we're going on three years into a plan now, so we should really be tackling some of those short or those mid-range plans as well. So. I, th I think if we take some time on our own and go back and, and um, maybe we can have a report on where we stand on some of those goals and um, you know see see what we have to focus on and what we have to move ahead with and, and maybe encourage um, you know some work and, and, and it's nice to maybe always be at Blue Heron but maybe we got to make sure that we've you know put some more bang at another park or on another one of these goals so kind of that's the homework is, is to look back through those goals. So any other, that, that's pretty much all I've got other than setting our meeting dates for, um, for next year. Hey, Mark, you, do, you, do you think we need to set any, um, you know, concert dates or anything that we want to do um, just in case we're able to do those? That, that was on my list also when I said meeting dates, I had a park concert date and a park movie night. I thought that maybe we would end up going along with the same, um, time frame that we had set up for last year. The money's in the budget to do one of each. So um, yeah, I, I think we we think about a an earlier summer concert and a, a later fall, you know, or September, or I'm sorry, late August. August late movie. August, right. I mean, we need to be cognizant of when the sun sets for the movie thing, but the, but the, the right. concert piece we can do anytime, you know? So is everyone in agreement with that? Absolutely. Yeah. I think if we we stick kind of the same time, I mean, we we had we had dates set for both for before COVID. So I, I think if we kind of stick to that same time frame and and we go from there, I think you know those are definitely two events that you know we we could add to to what we're thinking about and, and looking forward to. 
Actually, COVID's going to be around this summer too. Watch. Well, maybe maybe then we we change our activity and we try to find something that's that that we could utilize the park or we could spread out and do something. So, but I still think we should have dates in mind on the calendar. Oh, absolutely. If we can, and if we can, then we can. But right. I I still think we should have dates in mind. I agree. <clears throat> So anybody, anything else, anybody else has? Mark, I got one more quick thing. That doesn't really need a big discussion, but McJanet Park, you know, the little park that could need some better signage, I think. You don't, there's no signs on the road saying it even exists other than parking, you know, those blue parking state signs. And when you pull in there, there's a little sign that says what the name of it and, you know, kind of what it's origin. But I think it'd be a good project for maybe like an Eagle Scout mm. take on and good idea. Some, uh, a little bit more signage, I guess, maybe yeah. pointing out that it even exists uh, from the road. Also, they needed to replace um, one or two of the picnic tables. I can't remember. I know one was in really bad shape and they took it out. But I think they took two out of there. And I know we have picnic tables, right, Sarah? Do we? Uh, I'm not sure. But it would also be a nice place for a bench. Yeah. I know we have benches. I know we do. <laughs> Someone needs to sponsor one. That's right. No, and I mean, that's definitely something, Dan, we can easily look into and, and I mean, it, you know what, it's a sign that should fit with, with similar to what's at Miller Park and what, yeah. they all have a pretty similar look. That's a town park. It, right. You know, maybe, maybe we, we, we see why we don't have a sign and I know that there's some cost involved there, but um, it, it would be nice to, to be consistent in all of our signage at, for every park. So, yeah. Okay. So any, anybody, anything else? Okay, so, so as I looked at the calendar, if we stick with the third, or we're the fourth Wednesday, right? The fourth Wednesday? Um, yes. I just plugged through with, and again, I can send this out in an email, but I just went all the way February through October with the fourth Wednesdays. And then rather than having a November meeting the night before Thanksgiving, and another one two nights before Christmas or three nights before Christmas, I thought like we did this year, we combined and we had a, an early December meeting. The, which, we have the second week in December, I, the second Wednesday, I think is what we had. Which would be, I think, December 8th. Yeah. So do those dates, do those dates work okay? Mm -hmm. Yep. So we'll get, the, the, that way we can get on the calendar Gene will put that up on the website and we'll keep track of it that way. So the other thing that, that we, that hasn't been officially done is each year we're supposed to uh, talk about who's going to be the committee ch uh, chairman for the next, for the coming year. So you are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I nominate Mark. Oh, unless, unless somebody else wants to get over, which I would be more than happy to allow, but if, if everybody was okay, I would I would continue on for at least another year. Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good to me. Sounds good to me. I was just saying, unless Dave wanted to do it, I saw that his mute button was on. Well, that's well, that's good that you guys planned that because I just ended up uh, I had to go sign the oath that said I would do it today before the board meeting. So, <laughs> good thing you guys said it was okay. <laughs> but so, had anything else that we've got to cover that we it. it this may be the longest parks and rec meeting that I ever remember. Yeah. I, I will hold you to that. Correct. <laughs> so any, anything else that we got to cover? Or are we good to go? I know, I know Sarah's saying I got to get out of here. Yeah. yeah. So we're leaving the only one. Okay. Well, I, I, I haven't had dinner yet either. So, okay. <laughs> well, guys, thank you everybody. I really appreciate it. And thanks for bearing with us. So thanks everybody. Okay. Thanks Mark. It was a good Sarah, meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Good night.